So these are the tools that we're looking at. This is a center finder. You have the standard edge finder on the other side. So what we're doing here is we are enlarging our center finder capacity. So this guy is used for locating holes, but it's only limited to the size of that tool, that the cone on this tool, which is about three eighths of an inch or a little bit under if I remember. So when you get into larger holes, what do you do? Unless you have another tool, you're basically left with going right to the indicator, which you can do and is fine and everybody does it every day, but you can make a simple little cone tool that will act as a larger center finder for larger holes. So you can throw this in a half inch collet, throw this in the machine. This will allow you to visually and by feel locate the hole within about 5,000. And then if you need to be more precise, you can go to your indicator in a collet or whatever indicating system you like. did a cut, rough cut and a practice finish cut there so we can measure and set the DRO on the diameter. So this is one inch 60 thou. We'll go right down to half an inch and we're doing 750 back. This is 2011 aluminum. It's a very interesting material to work with. If you haven't played with it, I would suggest getting a piece just to try it out. Just a, a bung to fit into the collet for us. We can flip it around here, clamp on this, and then we're gonna cut 45 degree angle on this, so I'll be using the cross slide here. See, we're taking off uh, about 300 thousandths here in one pass, and it's a very quick and easy operation on this material. If this was uh, 6061, we'd have stringy chips everywhere, and this machine probably wouldn't want to take this depth of cut. If it was uh, stainless, we'd probably be doing 50 thou passes all the way down to where we want to be. Here, we can just do it in a couple minutes here. This is a finish pass, and then we'll basically be done with this tool. Pretty simple, quick little thing to make. You can make a variety of sizes and diameters. Uh, make it out of whatever material you want. You could do a 
60 degree cone if you prefer that and uh, more mimic the design of the center finder tool. I find that 45 is, uh, is fine for locating. Uh, usually if you want it to be more precise you're going to indicate it after that so it's kind of irrelevant. You're going to get within a few thou or five thou with this tool and then finish it with an indicator anyway. So. And that's basically it. So this guy is going to go into the spindle on the milling machine this way. What we're going to do is use it as a center finder. It's going to locate holes in your parts by feel and visual alignment for you. I've found that I like my center and edge finders in a solid holder. Makes it a little bit longer, which is actually really nice to work with. If you can find one that's uh, reasonably concentric, you know, a few tenths would be nice. I suppose you could shim it if you had to, or use an ER collet. Although I found this one to be more accurate than the uh, half inch collets that I had. So we're going with this for now. What we have is a series of holes that I drilled as an example. This center finder that floats around is really good for small holes up to about, what is it, 300, 350,000, something like that. The tip conforms to the hole. You can lock your quill and then you can move the table around to match the body diameter, this half inch diameter of the tool to the tip diameter, which is also half inch up here. So now that these are matched by feel, you are within a few thousandths of being on center with that hole. If that tolerance is enough for you, then that's fine. You can do your operation and move on and everything is good. If you need it more precise, then you would zero out your DRO, move that out of there, and then you can go in with an indicator and more precisely locate that hole. We can go over to this one and then you can move your table around until you are within feel centered on that hole, which is good too. You know, usually you can do five tenths pretty easily. But then with this tool, what happens when you get to a larger hole, something like this one, where your cone doesn't contact the hole at all. It's just the hole is too big and this tool is basically useless at this point. So this is where I would switch to the little tool that we just made. The only difference with this is it's not a floating tip. So you do need to line it up visually. The easy way to do is keep one hand on the quill handle. You're pushing down with a little bit of pressure. Move your table around with the other hand and visually you can get that quite accurate to center of that hole. This one with larger holes and the nature of larger holes being less accurate and less round, you know, you're probably gonna get within 10 thousandths. So now we're visually on center with that hole and we could go and indicate that if we need it to be better. And moving on up, like a big hole like this, same thing. You're going to keep a little bit of down pressure and move over with your hand wheels to get it visually centered until it's as good as you can get. And then you call it a day right there or you bring out your indicator. Let's bring the indicator, zero this out, and then we're gonna indicate it and we'll see what the difference is we get uh, between the two. See how close we got with just the manual cone tool, basically. And we know, because we just used our little tool, that we are pretty close to center here. It's close to the edge bring it out until we get a little bit of contact and then we'll put the spindle in neutral and spin this guy around and uh, take a look. So right at the front here we're basically at zero. We go over to the left side here we're at five. Go to the back and we're at five. Come to this side we're at zero and we're still at zero on the front. Let me move this around until we're at the indicated center of the hole. Okay, so now we are at the actual center of the hole. It's a little out of round because we just did a drill. We didn't center drill, we didn't do anything else. So we have a couple thou of waggle on this one, but all the way around, all the four quadrants were on zero. So that's what I'm gonna call the center of that hole. We're 2,000 positive in X. Eight 
negative eight and a half on Y. So quick and easy within 10 thou with that little cone tool. We made that in about five minutes. If you have the stock, it's free. For large holes, you know, fixing things, doing repairs, finding holes on castings, motorcycle casings, engine casings, things like that, where you don't really have another reference to go by, you need to find the center of that hole to, be the, to do the rest of your operations. This is a great little tool to do that. You could make up a set of these for yourself in half an hour in the shop. Whatever size you need, as big as you need, different shapes. You could even do an internal cone to find bosses and things like that. It doesn't have to be a tapered cone on the outside. It could be tapered inside, done with a boring bar or something like that. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of inspiration to think about quick little tools you can make in the shop that will save you time, save you frustration, are basically free, and uh, just make your life easier and more fun.